Uh, so I'm gonna. So so anyway, while we're making our way back, um, oh, something wrong. I'm shaking. All right, all right. Let's see what this is here. And it has the uh, Super Mario World theme song. <laughs> yeah, I, I, a new mailbox SP. My dearest Mario, I send this letter in the hope uh, that it reaches you safely. I am being held against my will in some strange place. Though I do not know where I am, I remain unharmed and in relative comfort. Those who have captured me seem to be after the map I sent to you earlier. They may be hoping to use it to find objects they call the Crystal Stars. I do not know what they are planning, but I have a feeling it is not anything positive. Mario, please collect these Crystal Stars before they do. You must. They are already aware that you have the map, so please be care very careful. And please, don't worry about me. Princess Peach. Princess Toadstool Peach. Yep. Sounds good. Nah, I nobody likes the kidnappers who are looking for the same things that we're looking for, that we're looking for. Okay, so all we have to do is make your way back. Actually, um, oh wait, did I already did I already grab this? Okay, I did. All right, cool. All right, all right. Just to make sure I'm not running into anything stupid, I'm gonna. Okay. So anyway, while we're making our way back, you can fight the enemies if you want, but uh, they're not really worth it anymore, in my opinion, so I'm just gonna not bother. So while we're making our way back, I'm gonna actually let let, let in on a secret. So if you remember watching the intro, uh, where uh, Peach got the uh, treasure map from some weird person in a hood, that is actually Beldum, uh, in disguise of a old merchant. Uh, very weird. Uh, very weird. Um, but um, I have to say that's a very per that is a very good disguise in my opinion because I would never because I would never figure uh, figure out that that's Beldum in disguise. Um, in that, uh, uh, if I if I were to like, if I was just some casual guy who just who just plays the game, then I would never figure out that that's Be that that's Beldum underneath that merchant. So just uh, let in on that. I'm pretty sure that. There's nowhere, there's no, there's that, there's no point in the game where it actually mentions that at all. Uh, so, I'm, so, in case it doesn't, that does not happen, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna point that out now. Anyway, uh, in this house is a fortune teller if you want to, uh, figure out where you want to, where you need to go. But, um, at this point I'm not lost because I have beaten the game before, so I don't need that at all. Uh, anyway, after chapter one, this person, uh, is no longer on this side of town, which was really ridiculous when, when it was, when she, when she was. I don't know if it's a she, but I should not be assuming people's genders because that's disrespectful. My name is Dazzle, and I collect star pieces. The, uh, the more I collect, the more happier I am, okay? All right, let's see what we got. Okay, so you have attack fix, att attack sound effect badge Y, uh, which I don't know what that sound is. We have chill out, pretty lucky, happy flower, happy heart, happy ha happy heart for your partner, item hog, uh, heart fi finder, flower finder, peekaboo, quick change, flower saver for your partner, flower saver, power plus for your partner, and power plus. Hmm. All these are actually pretty good. Uh, don't worry about pretty lucky because you can actually find a free one later. And peekaboo is tempting because you don't have to tattle you don't have to tattle enemies in order to display HP. Uh, and yes, it does make a return in this game. It's pretty useful in the first game, not very useful in this game because if you're gonna go for 100% in this game, you're gonna have to fill in the title log anyway. So Peekaboo is kind of useless. Peekaboo does make Goombella completely useless if you happen to use this, but I am not gonna take advantage of Peekaboo. I think I'm gonna get Quick Change because Quick Change is gonna be very useful later on. Unfortunately, 
Yeah, a lot of the good badges in the game in this game that were really good in the first game, they made it so that you need a lot of badge points to in order to equip it. So just half the time it doesn't really make it make make them worth getting at an early point of the game. Because early on you're not gonna have a lot of badge points to, to really make it to really make use of it, unfortunately. So it's kind of a shame. Okay, so anyway, now that we have now that we have the now that we have the paper mode, we can go ahead and, and squeeze through and figure out what the. Okay, we're not we're not going through here. Yeah, that's uh. I mean, you can try it, but not worth it. Anyway, so where we have to go is in a place is uh, back to the thousand year door. So let's do that. Uh, somewhere around here, I guess I already picked it up. Oh, I did not. Okay, it's right there. And uh, as well as. Oh god, okay, I need to get these guys out of my way. There it is, okay, there, there it is. That's pretty lucky. See, told you you can get a free one. Pretty lucky ensures that it's pretty much like a close call, except you don't have to be on uh, on uh, 5 HP or less in order, to, for, in order for enemies to miss. So it's a very cool badge. And a very, very good badge if uh, you feel, if you feel like it, that you're not good at fighting. Or if you're not good at blocking attacks, and that you and that if you take a lot of damage, then pretty lucky is a badge to use. Anyway, uh, we are back here to the thousand to the thousand year door. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and squeeze right through here, and uh, and and help to spring. Now that we have the paper mode and the airplane mode, so I can go ahead and figure out what is over on this side. All right, jump onto spring, and we have another shine sprite. Awesome. All right, but that's not all. There is something over here. Let's see what we got. Okay, so this place is known as... What? Starpees just found 12 out of 100. Oh, okay, I guess the game actually keeps track of your... Starpees? Yeah, it does, okay. So I guess there's 100 star pieces in the game, but I don't know where all 100 are. Which is, so, I guess if you want 100% the game, then you do have to find all 100 star pieces. I still haven't really figured out whether or not I'm going to fully 100% this game yet, because getting all the recipes is kind of a pain. Danger! Do not enter! This pipe is the entrance to the pit of 100 trials. That is right. First attack and bump attack badges do not work. Wow. Yeah, they made it so that so that you can't be overpowered here. Uh, so anyway, Pit of 100 Trials. If you're familiar with Super Pit for Mario's uh, 100 Trials, well, both 100 Trials for Super Pit for Mario, then you should know that this that this 100 Trials is pretty much going to be be similar. Except because there's an actual battle system in this game, uh, then it makes it really different. But at the same time, it is the hardest part. It is easy. It is by far the easiest, the hardest part of the game. Um, you can try to do it now, but it's not worth it. Um, it is actually well, yeah. You can try to do it now. It is possible, but I don't feel. But you'd have to be really lucky. In order to make it through it, so I'm not gonna try. Uh, at least not right now. I'm gonna save that as a separate episode to do uh, to do to do the pit of 100 trials. Um, so yeah. Anyway, all right, here it is. By the way, a little fun fact, um, there's actually a trick in this game where if you trick, where, uh, you can, uh, in the prologue, where as soon as you get to the sewers, you can actually trick the game 
as to thinking that you're, well, fall, well, doing like some frame perfect jumps, falling into the water, and uh, then the game will just ma randomly spawn you in the middle of the pipe where it takes you to chapter one. I don't know how to explain it. This is the but but this is the best I can but this is the best I can I can I can say. But yeah, if you trick the game by doing by doing that, then you skip having to go to the to the thousand year door. Um, and because you skip having to go to the thousand year door, you actually miss out on sweet tree entirely. Uh, which means you won't have to sweet tree at all if you manage to do that trick. It is I if from not from my knowledge, it is a Japanese exclusive trick. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but um, that's just uh, something that that's just something to know, to know that if you can somehow that if you somehow manage to like trick the game into into skipping the big blooper fights. Uh, you basically skip a lot of prologue, but it's stupid. It's a really stupid trick to do. I see. Crystal clear. Get it? It's a crystal star. <laughs> It's in Bogley Woods. The second Crystal Star is inside a great tree there. A great tree in Bogley Woods. Wow. Is there a Deku tree in there? I would love. Whoa. Some odd creatures that look like that look over there. I wish I could see what objects are in speech bubbles, yo. Yeah, some people who kidnap her are after the Crystal Stars. And she doesn't even know where she's being held. If Princess Peach's kidnappers are also looking for the, uh, for the Crystal Stars, what could they hope to achieve? I wonder, to be honest. Could the treasure be what? Something bad? Are we looking for the crystal stars to to do something bad? Are we gonna destroy the world with these crystal stars? I don't know. Let's just keep looking for the crystal stars. Alright then. So very well. So we gotta go ahead and go to Bogley Woods for uh, the next Crystal Star. Oh, look at this, it's Luigi. Hello. Whoa, you're also on an adventure too? Whoa, Princess Eclair? Who the fudge is that? The Waffle Kingdom? An evil chestnut king! Wow! So, I'm on a journey to rescue Princess Peach, and now you're on a journey to rescue a different princess. What about Daisy? Are you cheating on Daisy all of a sudden? Alright, let's hear it. Well, there's one... Tail, so might as well hear this one. All right, here we go. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, but here goes. My big brother, that's you, bro. Got a letter from Princess Peach. I took off. Left behind as usual. I was cooking a snack at home when another letter arrived. We don't get so much mail, so I was thinking, huh? This is what the letter said. Sirs, my name is Creepe. I am a cabinet minister in the far, wa far off Waffle Kingdom. Our land has been attacked by the Chestnut King who took our Princess Eclair. I ask, nay, beg for your, assist for your assistance. The Waffle Kingdom needs your skills. I humbly request your prompt response, sirs. Sincerely, Creepe. Well, 
I don't remember it exactly, but I think it went something like that. With Mario, that's you, bro. Gone. It felt to, it, it fell on me to answer the, this plea. Hesitating only a teensy bit, I, I headed to the Waffle Kingdom to investigate. Oh no, first I wrote a note to myself about what I was cooking, then I left. Once I reached the Waffle Kingdom, I met Minister Creepe, who filled me in. The Chestnut King had kidnapped Princess Eclair and vanished. Apparently, though, some oracle said a, a marvelous compass could locate her. This marvelous compass had been broken into seven parts by an ancient curse. And those parts had been scattered across the land. Can you believe it, bro? Each part of the marvelous compass was said to point to the next. And since one of the parts was embedded in the ti tiara worn by the prince princess, I surmised that once I collected all the parts, I'd find her. Smart, huh? The minister gave me the compass ba uh, base spoken uh, of in wa Waffler Fables. When I activated, the entire thing lit right up, indicating the deep south. It was pointing me toward Rumble Bump Volcano on the Pudding Continent. So yeah, here I am. I'm sailing out of Ro Rogueport for Rumble Bump Volcano. It's probably gonna be pretty dangerous, but I gotta rescue that princess. Yeah, Mario just falls asleep throughout these stories, but I honestly think these are pretty interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Um, every there will be a new story out of Luigi for every chapter, and. I guess since I already showed one off, I might as well just show one for every chapter, after every chapter, I guess. So, that that's Luigi for ya. Okay, let's see, what else is there? What else is there? Hmm, uh... Should I deal with this guy now? Hmm, might as well, I guess. Alright, hello. You're an outsider. Pass this point is the turf of Ishnail, head of the Robos. It's ten coins to pass through. You try to pass without paying, I'm afraid I'll whoop you good. Uh, fine, I'll pay. I'm not paying. I'm not paying. It's really simple. If you don't pay, you don't pass. Cool. I can take you. Ha ha ha! Yes, sir. Here it is. Okay, so this guy, this guy is Gus. So Gus, I believe, has where is he? Okay, so Gus has 20 HP. He has an attack bar of three. He has spear throw and spear charge. Uh, spear charge is a physical move, and spear and, and spear throw is a throwing move. Um, you do not want to jump on him because his spear is pointy. So don't do that. It's pretty much like jumping on a spear guy with a with a spear pointing upwards. You don't want that. Dang it! Oh, I tried to counter it. Holy crap! Okay. Now, all right. Now it's Koops' time to shine. All right, here we go. So yeah, that's pretty much Gus. And as I mentioned many times, you can take a mom before the prologue, but it's but the reward is useless if you do if you do so and and uh, since you can now do more stuff in chapter one uh then this makes fighting this guy more worth it plus uh in addition to that you're more powerful so definitely we're definitely worth fighting this guy past chapter one okay that sucks After chapter one, or anywhere, or anywhere that's not prologue. I mean, it's possible to beat him uh, in the prologue. All you have to do is just get power. It's just get power smash, and then you can beat him. And then you can use sweet treat uh, if you're on low on eight. Uh, if you're on low on HP. Um, but yeah, of course. But obviously, of course, it's you have to be really lucky because this guy is not easy if you're fighting him in the prologue. You think violence solves everything? I don't know. You're the, you're the one who's like you're the one who's like I'll whip you for good if you're trying if you're gonna pass if you're gonna pass through here. Like f off, man. All right. So anyway, so the many things they can do here. There is this building, and if you're familiar with uh, Paper Mario One's uh, Koopa Coop with the favors, uh, it's basically that. 
And uh, the more chapters that you complete, the more favors that there are here. And I'm going to take care of that when all of them are available. So I'm not going to be taking care of it now at all. Although you do get some nice money out of it, uh, you do get a uh, pretty good, a pretty good amount of money as well as a good amount of, as well as a good amount of, uh, a good amount of experience out of it. Because I think some of the favors require you to fight some enemies. I don't remember for sure. And you also get some pretty cool items as well. Coops is stuck underneath, uh, in between the houses. Yikes, that's rough. So yeah, that's pretty much all you can do here. Um, so yeah, if you want to take on those troubles, the favors, then be my guest. I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about them now. That's gonna be a little bit challenging on my part because uh, I'm not gonna be used to that. Anyway, some other things they can do is uh, is, is uh, we have this guy. Uh, this guy. Okay, so this guy has some has has four random items on sale, and the four random items are completely random. Uh, well, not necessarily completely random, but there's a there's a certain there are a certain amount of items that he has on sale. And they're all pretty, pretty random. And he chooses four out of those items. Uh, all these items that he sells are really expensive. And most of them aren't really worth getting. Because you can get all of these somewhere else for cheaper. However, there's one certain item that I am looking for from this guy. Uh, and that is one of the items that is noted in the pastebin link on the that's on the description. Um, unfortunately, though, even if it has appeared now, I do not have enough coins for it. So I will come back later when I have the coins. Uh, to uh, for, for I will I will come back later when I have the coins to this guy, and and buy that item. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the most part oh okay I guess another thing I can show off now is probably over here so um, this is this is what the inn looks like I have not shown this off but um, the inn is upstairs downstairs is a bar which I guess is cool because um, you know when you're staying over you want to go downstairs. You want to have a drink and eat a meal or something like that. And this is where you can pay your f pay up your five coins to, um, or unless you have an in coupon, you can stay in for free with the price of an in coupon. And then over here we have a star piece. And then go inside this building. And this is another bad shop. So there are two bad shops in this in, in this game. Hey, I, I know you. Well, you're not going to say anything about me? I know you. Where's your red mask? Anyway. Uh, all these badges that are on this counter are random. However, you're not just limited on these badges, as you can see. Let's see. We have Last Stand, Happy Flower, Super Appeal, FP Drain, and Simplifier. So you're not just limited on, on those badges. I'm buying. Oh yeah, you can sell badges as well. So if you need to sell any badges, then um, you can get some pretty good. You can get a good. A lot of the badges in the game actually sell for a good price. So if there's a badge that you don't want, then you can feel free to do that. I've never sold any of my badges because, in the case that I happen to need them later, but most of the badges I don't really use anyway. But I don't know. Alright, uh, so you can go special deals or others. Let's see what special deals have. Oh, okay. So the special deals are the ones that are on here. So yeah, you're not. So yeah, you're not just limited on those. There's also other badges you can get. Like for example, right here, we have power jump, sleepy, st uh, sleepy stomp, piercing blow, last stand for your partner, close call, close call for your partner, and the unsimplifier. 
Okay, so I believe that more that there will be more of these badges later because I do not remember the badge list being this small. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is tempting. I think I'm gonna wait till later to, to get this to get this one. So, all right. So that's pretty cool to show off. And I've been recording for quite a while now, so. Alright, um, there's not really any side quests, there's not really any other side quests besides that, of that house with the, with the favors. Uh, that, by the way, that place is called the Trouble Center. Uh, and, I, and, so, yeah, I, I know, people are gonna probably yell at me and say that, Oh, there's a name for it, it's called the Trouble Center, ah! But, uh, yeah, I know it's called the Trouble Center. I'm not worrying about it. So aside from Trouble Centers, I think that's all I can do in between the chapters. So uh, with that, um, oh, well, I mean, uh, I could explore that side, but uh, it's not worth it right now. Or it's not useful at, at the moment. Wait, no. Okay, I'm not done. I'm not done. There is one more thing that I did not show up. I was meant to show this off like probably 10 minutes ago, but I was sidetracked in. In here, this is the Shine Sprite house, right here. This is, uh, yeah. This is Merlin, yeah, that's right. Merlin is back in this game. He's moved from Toad Town here to Rogueport. Uh, this time, Merlin, act instead of Merlin being a fortune teller and telling you where you need to go if you're lost, uh, with the price of three Shine Sprites, he will power up your partner. So essentially, Merlin is your permanent super block in the game. Uh, so you don't have to go out of your way to look for super blocks. Although shine sprites are replacements of super blocks uh, from the first game, uh, except you do need to find three. Um, you do need to find three. Three. <laughs> Crap. Uh, shine sprites. If you want to upgrade any of your part uh, party members, I'm gonna upgrade Goombella first because I'm gonna be using her the most out of all my party members. So I'm going to upgrade her as much as I can. In fact, when you upgrade Goombella, she gets a really good move right away. And this move is going to be very useful for me. Um, because I have certain strategies in this game that, may, that make a lot, a, lot of the, a lot of really difficult boss fights really easy. So there we go. So when you upgrade your party members, they get more HP, they get more attack power, and they learn a new move. So, Goombella's new move is Multibonk. Yeah, it's not Charge from Paper Mario 1, it's Multibonk. Which is like Power Bounce, for the most part. So that needs no explanation at all. Uh, later on, uh, the reason Charge is not her next move is... Well, you'll figure out why. Anyway... That's going to be it for this episode of Paper Mario 1000 Door. So next time, we are going to make our way to the next chapter. So uh, be sure to check out the pasteman link below in the description of every episode to contribute on some nickname, uh, on some nickname wars, as well as, um, as, well as something else that, that, is, that, is, list, that is mentioned on, on that pasteman that I will not talk about because of spoiler reasons. So, um, with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and next time we're going to make our way to the next chapter. So, see you guys next time. Goodbye.